We just received this power supply for a Samsung Plasma TV, and the customer was saying that the TV would intermittently shut off, and over time got worse to the point where the TV would not turn on anymore. So let's take a look and find out why that's happening. With most power supplies coming out of plasma sets, I know that they have a lot of heat, and heat causes expansion. When we have a lot of heating and cooling from the TV being on and off, you get the expansion with the heating and then the contraction with the cooling. This will cause cracked solder joints. Now, most often on these boards, we're gonna see the cracked joints on any components that are attached to a heatsink or the transformers. So let's flip the board over and taking a look here, we're gonna be paying special attention to our transformers. For this board specifically, we see crack joints on these larger transformers on some of the legs here. So we'll zoom in on those with our other camera here in a minute, but before we do that, we actually also found bulge capacitors. So bulge capacitors, that happens on LED boards, it happens on LCD TVs, uh, plasmas, doesn't matter what it is, we see it on all of it. And if we can t look here, this capacitor is rounded out at the end, whereas the other one that's very similar on the other side here is very flat. So let's flip it over again and take a look. And it's bulging, kind of bubbling. And if we look at the back side, actually over here, you can see it's also bubbled out. Uh, instead of being very flat like this one, it's a little bit bubbled out on both ends. So let's go ahead and remove it and replace it and then we'll take a look at those crack joints with the other camera. So the first thing I need to do is remove it. It's currently attached with some silicone. So I'm just gonna twist it, lift it off the board, and now only the two legs that are soldered in are holding it in. We'll flip the board over. All right, using our desoldering iron, we're gonna go ahead and remove the capacitor. Now that we have it removed from the board, we can tell that it is a 10 volt, 3300 microfarad capacitor. So we'll go ahead and get a replacement and put that one in instead. I have my replacement capacitor. Um, the longer lead is the positive and the shorter lead is the negative. That is always gonna be the case on electrolytic capacitors. So that's how I know my orientation. We'll go ahead and lay it down. Now this capacitor isn't quite exactly the same size, but that's okay. It's still gonna work. And then I'm just gonna bend the leads out to help lock it into place while I solder it down. Go ahead and clip the excess. Double check one more time. Our orientation, we have our negative over on the left side, which is exactly how it was originally and indicated on the board. So we're all set with that capacitor. None of the other capacitors are bulged. So our next step is to take another closer look at our crack joints on those transformers. So right now I am zoomed in on the bottom transformer, the, the larger two, and looking at the bottom leg here, this one actually looks okay. Uh, but if we look at this joint, we're starting to see just a little bit of a crack over here and then a tiny little bit of a beginning of a crack on this side as well. Um, so this joint I don't think is actually the immediate cause of our problem, but it is one we're gonna want to add some extra solder to um, for future and preventative repair. Now if we bring this down a little bit, look at this one. So this one is probably the immediate cause and the reason that the TV is not turning on. We can very clearly see Oh yeah, if I touch the pin, you can see it move a little bit. So that pin is completely loose. It's not making any contact whatsoever with the board anymore. And uh, of course, it's very obvious. You can see that shadow uh, around it. And we have burnt flux here on the edges. So, but this is definitely the immediate cause and reason why the customer is not getting power right now is you're just not getting any flow of electricity. It's not making contact. Let's look at some of the other pins. That one looks okay, that one looks okay. This one also doesn't look quite good. This one has 
a little bit of a crack around here. It's not as bad as the other one. If I push on it, it's still locked in, but this one's gonna fail pretty soon if we don't touch it up. So we're definitely gonna wanna add solder to that one as well. Same with this one over here. Okay, it's not moving, but again, we can see there's the beginnings of a crack over here and on this side as well. Uh, it looks like over here as well, but it, it's somehow it's still locked in. It's still making good contact, but again, we're definitely gonna need to add some solder to it. This one looks okay. And then let's look at our other transformer. Those legs are okay. And these are also looking okay so far. So it looks like, like it's just those bottom two. Um, we'll take another quick look at the other side of the transformer. All right, this one is looking a tiny bit suspicious. Maybe this one as well. Um, I don't actually see any cracking, but what could be the beginnings of a crack. So we'll touch those up as well. Let's see here. Okay. Those look pretty good. I don't see any problems there. And mm, this one could be potentially starting to crack over here. So we, in theory, only have to solder this one to get the board back up and running, but obviously that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to, we're gonna just solder all of it just to be sure that we take care of the problem and that there's no issues in the future. So let's go ahead and do that for all the joints. Now on this board right now, we're looking at it's taken from a TV model number PN64D7000 but it is also used in the PN64 D8000, as well as I believe it's used for the 59 inch version. Um, and that one I think is P59D5500. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'll, I'll put it in the description. Okay. Move it down. And we're just adding right now leaded solder. One of the reasons we use leaded solder is because lead is a softer metal. So in theory, it is supposed to expand and contract without cracking as much as non-leaded solder, which has uh, uses metals that are more prone to the cracking from thermal expansion and contraction. Oh, and I'm doing that off screen, let me adjust.
And we're down to our last transformer. And I believe this board, uh, just going back on the models that it's compatible with, uh, I believe it is a BN44 part number, BN44-00447A. And like I said, it is compatible with a few different models and we'll have some more information on that in the description. Now, if you have a different power supply that you think might have cracked solder joints or you need any help with any diagnostics for similar boards, you can always let us know in the description below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Okay, that's all of it. So we replaced the capacitor and we finished reflowing the transformers. I did do another check across the board and I didn't see any other crack solder joints. So the board is fixed and ready to be shipped back to the customer. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.